It was designed by a sculptor with ties to the Ku Klux Klan. The president of the Oglala Sioux Tribe had ordered Trump to cancel Friday's event. This is President Trump addressing the crowd of thousands in front of Mount Rushmore Friday. Make no mistake, this left-wing cultural revolution is designed to overthrow the American Revolution. To make this possible, they are determined to tear down every statue, symbol, and memory of our national heritage. And this is President Trump speaking in Washington, D.C. Saturday, where he compared the, quote, radical left to Nazis. We are now in the process of defeating the radical left, the Marxists, the anarchists, the agitators, the looters, and people who, in many instances, have absolutely no clue what they are doing. In every age, there have always been those who seek to lie about the past in order to gain power in the present. Those that are lying about our history, those who want us to be ashamed of who we are, are not interested in justice or in healing. Eat it, you Our lying clansmen. Our goal is not to destroy. You are, with every word and speech. The same You're going to prison. Trump's White House address. Protesters in Baltimore, Maryland, pulled down a statue. Of Christopher Columbus. Woo! They then dragged the statue several blocks and it into there. the yes. city's harbor. For more, we go to Albuquerque, New Mexico, where we're joined by Nick Estes, citizen of the Lower Rural Sioux Tribe, assistant professor of American Studies at the University of New Mexico. Welcome back to Democracy Now! Professor Estes, it's great to have you with us. Let's talk about the significance of this moment that President Trump chose to seize on. Uh, July 3rd, in honor of Independence Day, he goes to Mount Rushmore, named for a bold speculator, a New York attorney, um, designed by a supporter of the Ku Klux Klan. Um, even as leaders of indigenous nations in the United States demanded he not come to the Black Hills, Talk about the significance of Mount Rushmore for indigenous people and that whole area. Good morning, Amy. Uh, yes, this is a very um, kind of important history to talk about because, as you mentioned in the news brief, uh, the Black Hills, or what we know as Hesapa, is the cultural kind of like center of our universe as Lakota people. Um, but more than 50 different indigenous nations actually have origin stories or ties or spiritual connections to the Black Hills. And the Lakota people, uh, as well as the Cheyenne and Arapaho people, when they signed the, uh, the 1868 Fort Laramie Treaty, became the caretakers of that land. And so back in 1980, uh, there was a Supreme Court decision that ruled that the, the Black Hills itself had been illegally taken from the Lakota nation, and that the Supreme Court itself could only reward um, a monetary compensation because the courts can't actually award land back to the tribes. And so since 1980, the tribes have been refusing to accept money for, they can't put a price tag on the Black Hills, um, so they've been refusing to accept money. But at the same time, the Black Hills themselves has become a hot spot of the kind of cultural war that Trump is trying to stir up across the nation. For example, there are about 2 million visitors per year that go to Mount Rushmore. Uh, and with the kind of new guidelines about social distancing, we can see that this is only further exacerbating um, the, the COVID-19 pandemic and tribes' responses to it. And so when Trump announced that he was coming to this particular area, er, area he wasn't invited by the tribes. The tribes actually asked him to seek an invitation um, to respect their sovereignty. And if you listen to the audio clip, not once does he mention the fact that the tribes, you know, opposed his visit there. So this is a very contentious issue for Lakota people. 